Katak in Hawaii. 20-year-old Jenna Lutterop, uh, a German tourist, died yesterday from injury sustained during a shark attack a week ago. The woman was snorkeling in Hawaii when a shark bit her off, or rather bit off her right arm. Her arm was uh, never recovered. In a statement, her family said Jenna fought hard to stay alive, but lost her fight yesterday. And that's a quick update of uh, news headlines that I have for you on this Thursday. Switching over, we're going to do News of the Weird right now. And that's going to allow, oh, son of a bitch, why is this happening? And a good question to ask as we start off with News of the Weird. An apartment complex in Indianapolis is so messed up, how messed up you ask? The city claims cops and health inspectors hardly have time to investigate anywhere else. Residents at the La Esmeralda complex have unreasonably consumed resources by uh, filing nearly 400 criminal and public health complaints. The good news is the rent isn't very high. This driver has a speed problem. He's too slow. Oh, oh, get across the street. 59-year-old Gary Constance lost his uh, Minnesota driver's license after being caught nine times driving 10 to 15 miles per hour under the 55 mile per hour speed limit. An appeals court this week rejected uh, Constance's defense that he wanted to save on gas and not hit critters. I think that's an admirable quality. Save fuel, save the animals, save the world. So, you know, maybe we ought to lower the speed limits a little bit. Get up a little earlier. It takes longer to get to our destinations. Well, everyone knows not to mess with the tax man, but this is ridiculous. Pennsylvania widow Eileen Eileen Battisti lost her $300,000 home after she missed paying a $6.30 interest charge on a 2009 tax bill. $6.30? Even I can afford that. Well, maybe after next payday. Uh, which grew to $235 with interest. That I can't afford. I'm sorry, Eileen. I, I can't help you. The house was sold at auction for $116,000. This week, a judge showed some mercy, granting a hearing before the sale can be finalized. Now that's cold. Denver officials kicked a family out of subsidized public housing just two days after the mom was murdered. Because victim Sandra... Uh, well, Skilly was the only person named on the lease. Her mom, an autistic nephew, must get out, according to city officials. We understand the family is under duress, but we will be locking the unit because they have no legal rights, according to officials. And finally, texting and driving got this Wisconsin man into a heap of bleep. Matthew Brune, age 37, finished talking and texting on a Highway 151 in Grant County. When he looked up, police said, just as he slammed his rented Ford Mustang into a manure truck. Ah, yes, the old Biff defense. I hate manure! Let's watch Back to the Future. You'll understand that joke. Well, we'll have a rundown of lottery numbers in just a little bit. But that concludes uh, today's news of the weird for this Thursday. What do you say we switched over to the CBS World News desk and find out what's going on on here on planet Earth? We'll do that right now. So let's switch this over here, and away we go. Big city mayor strikes a deal. The long political drama here in San Diego could be nearing its end. Closing arguments in Fort Hood trial. The jury could return a verdict this week. Voice of calm in a crisis. Tell them to stand down now. Okay. Tell them to stand down now. He said. Good morning. I'm Steve Kathan with the CBS World News Roundup. After weeks of scandal and days of negotiation, the political end may be near for San Diego Mayor Bob Filner against a backdrop of sexual misconduct. CBS's Steve Futterman is in San Diego. Just hours after yet another accuser came forward. I was shocked. It was inappropriate. A tentative deal was announced. We have reached a proposed resolution 
It will be presented to the city council at a closed session council meeting on Friday. No details were disclosed, but a source tells CBS News resignation appears to be part of the deal. Rachel Lang is with the recall Filner campaign. She says for the moment, the campaign continues. For us to stop our recall, we are going to expect a resignation. The mayor made his first city hall appearance in three weeks yesterday. It was brief. It's good to see you guys. Thanks. Tomorrow, it's possible Mayor Filner could make his last appearance. Steve Futterman, CBS News, San Diego. Now to Texas. Closing arguments are set for today on the trial of Major Nadal Hassan for the 2009 Fort Hood match. Massacre. Major Hassan says those attacked here were soldiers, quote, going to engage in an illegal war. Personally, I think he's obviously guilty, and I can't think of a military case in my lifetime that was more meritorious of capital punishment than this case. But he is still a human being. Former Judge Advocate General Jeffrey Korn says that means he's entitled to a fair trial. And if he chooses, speaking without time restraints during a penalty phase about why he did what he's repeatedly admitted to. August Skamaka, CBS News, Fort Hood, Texas. His lawyer says Bradley Manning is sending a letter to President Obama explaining his leak of classified information and asking for a pardon. Manning, the 25-year-old Army private, was sentenced to 35 years yesterday. His lawyer says Manning wants to live the rest of his life as a woman. The Obama administration's revealed more surveillance secrets in the fallout from the leaks by former NSA contractor Edward Snowden. And there's an acknowledgement that thousands of Internet communications with no connection to terrorism were collected. It's being called an unintended consequence of the gathering process. Security analyst Elizabeth Goitine of the Brennan Center for Justice says it raises questions about the secret court that monitors the NSA. The court is not in a position to oversee and monitor compliance with its own rulings. So it is entirely reliant on the NSA to self-report. Overseas, there's new amateur video from Syria (laughs) indicating military attacks on the opposition are taking place outside Damascus, not far from where an alleged chemical attack is said to have taken place. The U.S. has asked the U.N. to investigate. In Egypt, its expected former leader Hosni Mubarak will be released from prison today, but he'll remain under house arrest. His release comes amid a military crackdown that's left more than a 1,000 dead and hundreds in detention. Back here at home, Hannah Anderson is beginning to tell her story publicly. She's the 16-year-old California girl abducted earlier this month after her mother and brother were killed. She was found by horse riders in Idaho. I wanted to thank the horsemen and the Amber Alert and the sheriff and the FBI. She was on NBC's Today Show. I'd like to say thank you because without them, I probably wouldn't be here right now. Hannah Anderson says she did exchange texts with the man who seized her beforehand, but denies there were any phone calls, as police have suggested. James DiMaggio was a friend of her mother, and he was shot and killed by authorities. The police chief in Decatur, Georgia, calls Antoinette Tuff a hero. She's the office bookkeeper heard on a 911 call relaying messages from the gunman Tuesday at an elementary school. He doesn't want the kids. He wants the police. So back off. And um, and what else, sir? He said he don't care if he dies. He don't have nothing to live for. And he said he's not mentally stable. She stayed calm in a dangerous situation. After shooting at police, he gave up. I just want you to know that I love you, though, okay? And I'm proud of you. That's a good thing that you've just given up, and don't worry about it. We all go through something in life. No one was hurt at that school outside Atlanta. Police say the 20-year-old suspect had nearly 500 rounds of ammunition. As students head back to college, President Obama will get on a bus. His trip to New York and Pennsylvania is about making higher education more affordable. We're live in Washington with CBS's Barry Bagnato. On a tour that will carry him from Buffalo to Scranton, the president will promote a proposal to create a rating system that will compare a university's costs with its outcomes to help students find good value schools. And to further motivate colleges to make improvements, he wants to tie federal financial aid to rating scores. Larger Pell Grants and more affordable loans would be available to students at higher performing colleges. He also says he'll strip away unnecessary regulations that stifle innovation. Steve? On the western wildfire front, concern is growing about an out-of-control blaze that's increased to 25 square miles near California's Yosemite National Park. KOVR TV's Steve Large is covering. Hit the top of the tree! Fueled by dry weather and high winds, the rim fire exploded in size, growing 60% in just one 24-hour period. 
threatening 2,500 homes. This fire has grown so large, the head is, is creating its own weather. It has been an unpredictable inferno, jumping Highway 120 and forcing officials to close this major route into Yosemite National Park. The park is still open, but a thick smoke cloud is moving in that direction. The fire is just 5% contained. The latest glimpse into history comes in the release of the final installment of the Nixon Tapes. 340 hours of recordings from the Oval Office posted online by the National Archives. Here's CBS's Dan Revive. On April 30th, 1973, just after Nixon announced on TV that his top advisors resigned or were fired because of the growing Watergate scandal, California Governor Ronald Reagan called to express support. I know how, how difficult it was, and I know what the fellas having to do what they did. And, and That's right. They had to get out. And I, can, I can understand. That was 17 months before Nixon resigned and seven years before Reagan won the presidency. <laughs> Dan Ravive, CBS News, Washington. A new CDC report looks at something that's still fairly common but now controversial, circumcision. Fewer baby boys are getting circumcised before leaving the hospital. Um, And this decline over the time period that we studied, which was 32 years from 1979 to 2010, was about a 10% decline in those rates. Maria Owings with the National Center for Health Statistics says the biggest declines were out west where there was a decline of 37%. Sabrina Gibbons for CBS News Atlanta. Some say the decrease is because fewer insurers are paying for it. In Brazil, 50,000 people have downloaded an app called Boyfriend Tracker, and it does just what the name suggests, provided the woman can get her hands on her boyfriend's phone and download it. Because of privacy concerns, Google has now stopped offering it. It's still available on the developer's website. He says he started it as a joke and insists it's just for social and recreational use. That's the World News Roundup. I'm Steve Kaith, CBS News. Reminds me of what my shop teacher in high school said about practical jokes. Think it through before you follow through, because if you don't, uh, the implications could uh, bring consequences that you weren't ready for. Thank you, Mr. Thompson, and uh, one of my favorite teachers of all time. It just occurred to me I forgot to upload today's news blooper, so there'll be no news blooper for today. I can't believe I forgot that. There's always something on a show that I forget to do, and that was today's. We're a couple of minutes away from 10 o'clock, and coming up in just a moment, we'll have the tweets of the day, as well as lottery numbers, and who knows what else I have in store for you. Song of the day, that's the other thing I was going to run down. We'll get to all that in just a little bit, right after this break. you would be loving this, mate, wouldn't you? Have you witnessed anything like this? Anybody can report this behavior. Hey guys, can I get a hand for a sec? I thought you lesbians were supposed to be as good as us, like. No matter how subtle. Hey princess, who's your tiara today? They are all forms of sexually based harassment. If you know someone's prejudices have got out of hand or have become inappropriate, do something about it. There needs to be a change. In the way that you look at me, In the way we look at ourselves. In the way we look at all transgender people. The misunderstanding. The cruelty. The cruelty. The violence. The violence. Needs to end. Learn about who we are. Learn about who you are. And in the end, we may not look so different at all. away from 10 o'clock on this edition of First Cup, second episode being recorded live, and hope you're enjoying it. And what do you say we take a look at the winning lottery numbers from yesterday? A reminder, Mega Millions drawing is tomorrow night, and it's worth an estimated 60 million smackers, $60 million for tomorrow night's Mega Millions drawing. Powerball for last night, those winning numbers were 30, 40, 42, 46, 48, and the Powerball number, 23. Again, last night's Powerball numbers were 30, 40, 42, 46, 48, and the uh, Powerball number, 23. 
Saturday's drawing, since no one won last night, Powerball for Saturday is worth $92 million. That's nearly $51.5 million after taxes. A lot of numbers from yesterday in the show me state. They were 7, 20, 